Okay, yep, Nate, thanks for being here. Uh, obviously, credit again to, to LSU players, Coach Kelly and his staff. They execute at a very high level, and uh, they played a very, a very good game on Saturday. Uh, I, like I said, after the game, we have a choice now how we want to respond, how, we're going to, how we decide to show up and improve from this, right? You never waste a failing. Okay, uh, we got to make, we got to ensure that we don't allow one loss to leak into the, bleed into the next week and, and create a second. Okay, and so that's the challenge in front of us. All right, we have a challenge this week going on the road for the first time this season, uh, playing at what is known to be one of the most energetic uh, atmospheres, particularly a night game in all of college football. Okay, so hopefully our players are excited for that opportunity and that challenge, because uh, it's all your know, attitude, your best friend, or your worst enemy. And so we, should, we get to play in an electric environment in front of a great crowd, uh, I think, versus a football team and very, very similar to us, okay? And we get to learn something about, about ourselves because our first road trip. Uh, Coach Beamer's done a tremendous job in his short time there. They're physical and uh, fast on defense, uh, very athletic on offense. Obviously, returning veteran quarterback who is thrown for a lot of yards right now. Um, and can make every throw on the field. And so uh, credit Coach Beamer and the job he and his staff have done there. Um, they've won one right from the start. And so we know we're facing a very talented football team. And I think both teams are excited to get back on the field and improve. And it should be a, a hard fought game. It's going to be a four quarter game. Coach, you said on Saturday you weren't sure if it was a lack of execution or if it was a you were not calling the right things to put your players in the right position. Now that you've watched the film, do you have a leaning on that one way or the other? Oh, I think anytime you look at a course of a game, you got 180 plays, right? You're going to have plays where you're going to have plays where on each side of the ball. Well, yeah, uh, you know, wish I had a different call on in that you know in that down and distance, so that we're in man coverage and. Oh shoot! Should have been. Wish I would have been in zone there, so or vice versa. Um, but there are certainly a number of plays where we don't execute either, and so you don't give you don't give a, the call a chance. Uh, a couple uh, offensive defensive line questions. Uh, you mentioned you wanted to have competition up front with the offensive line. Now that we're in three weeks into the season, is there any I guess more of a sense of urgency to find a solidified starting five and just roll with them going forward? I think some of that depends on depends on the game too, right? I mean, if if you have the ability to rotate a couple guys, then you can keep guys fresh as well. Um, as soon as we solidify who who the definitive five are, it will be those five full time. And until we do, you, you'll see guys get opportunities to show. So we have competition. And then, and then with the defensive line, you, you've mentioned in camp a couple of times about potentially going with a four-man front to, to help with, with pass rushing and, and getting more pressure. Is that something that's still being talked about to, to you know, possibly get that group going a little bit more consistently? Uh, we evaluate that every week. Uh, a lot of that de determines on the health of your roster too, right? And so uh, that's a week-to-week -week determination. You guys are giving up explosive plays, you know, a few in that game. Was that more of a product of just a pass rush not getting home, or do you feel like it was some, some blown coverages or missed assignments? No, well, I mean, uh, a couple, a couple were getting beaten, getting beat over the top in coverage you shouldn't get beat in. Um, you know, if you're in cover three, obviously your rules be deeper than the deepest. Uh, now, if they run a go ball, it it turns into one on one coverage that that far down the field. Um, so I think there's a couple where you could say maybe a, a lull in concentration and all of a sudden it's a 50-50 ball. Uh, a couple times you get beaten man coverage, that's the risk of playing man, right? And that's the risk of playing man versus a really talented wide receiver. And so um, that's, you know, that's the risk you take when you, when you blitz and play man. Uh, the, fourth and, the fourth and six for the touchdown, right? We hit him. We hit him, but on these inside fades, right, you can get the ball off early enough to, to beat the pressure a lot of times. And credit to them, perfectly thrown ball there in the corner of the end zone. Um, you know, there's one of those, like, like I mentioned earlier. Well, hindsight, oh, man, wish we would have played zone right there. Now you open yourself up to other things, too. So, um, yeah. On the flip side, offensively, one of the things that y'all have mentioned, Coach Barbet's mentioned, is having explosive plays on the offensive side of the ball. And right now, last in the SEC in explosive plays. What do you think's been 
kind of the main factor in that? Oh, uh, well, obviously the more plays you run, the more opportunities you have for explosive plays. So staying on the field, right, Con converting third downs and keeping drives going leads to more plays, which then leads to more opportunities for explosive plays. Uh, on both sides of the ball, that's going to be the, the big message today, challenge on both sides is, right, getting our opponent off the field and sustaining drives and staying on the field obviously is going to be a, a big area of improvement for us. Now, when you look at the, if you look at the tape, you know, Woody breaks the, the long run there right before the end of the first half, goes for 50-something, right? That's clearly an explosive run. Well, we have that play on the, the second play of the game. The exact same look, but we mess up and we have an assignment there in our blocking and we have double pullers, right? And so, uh, you know, instead of, instead of being an, an ideal look to hopefully generate an explosive early on, which we have on film that, hey, when we executed it properly and, and created an explosive play, we missed an opportunity there right from the jump. And so, but simply put, if we can get our opponent off the field quicker and get the ball back to our offense, that gives them more drives and more opportunities for plays. And then if we can convert third downs and keep drives going, that leads to more plays. The more plays you get, the more explosive plays you're going to get. <laughs> like just on the flip side, you create more three and outs, you limit your opponent's plays, guarantee it will lead to less explosive plays. Uh, I was curious where in the process uh, things are with the, uh, Sean Preston's appeal, and then um, we saw Simeon had a boot on, on Saturday. Is that a long-term thing or a short-term thing going forward? Uh, Simeon, no, it's a short-term thing. So, yeah, he'll be fine. Um, I imagine he'll be back full go today. And then Sean, uh, I believe we got the email earlier this morning that the appeal was denied, so he'll have to sit out the first half. Mike Wright have a couple uh, nice plays there in that last scoring drive y'all had. What did you think of the, the way he performed and, and the snaps that he got? And would you like to see some, some more playing time for him moving forward? Yeah, Mike did a nice job. You know, that last touchdown, uh, you call it an RPO, right? They overloaded, pressured, and he was able to pull it, get around, get around the edge pressure, and then dump it off to Harmon for a, a walk-in touchdown. Um, I'm sure there's some mis-execution mis on, on their end too, right? They're saying the same thing. But when he got his opportunities, he was good, and uh, that's the kind of guy Mike is. And obviously, we're going to do whatever it takes to win. And so, you know, we're always going to have a, a, a package for Mike, yeah. Uh, with that suspension for, for Sean Preston in the first half, it's going to open up the door for some of the younger guys in the secondary, particularly Isaac Smith. Uh, what do you make of the way he's played so far and, and some of the younger guys back there in the depth in that position group? Yeah, well, Isaac obviously got in there and got some uh, good live experience versus one of the most talented teams in the country, which is great for his development. Uh, obviously, he, he will see increased playing time in the first half this week. Also opens opp opportunities for other guys in that safety room. You know, I, would, I would expect to see Jordan Morant uh, competing with Isaac for the starting job there this week. Uh, we rolled kind of th three guys in the other, between Corey Ellington, uh, Marcus Banks, and Chris Keyes kind of handled the other safety positions. And so eh, it's a next man up mentality, whether it's, whether it's an injury, whether it's a you know, targeting penalty, the mindset has to be the same no matter what. It's next man up mentality. You gotta go in and get the job done. And so uh, we've had, we have some true freshmen getting exposed to the high level of football that is played in this league uh, very early as true freshmen, maybe even earlier than you would ideally like, but that is the situation was, you know, we got Malik Ellis um, playing on offense. Again, uh, Isaac showing up in there. And so a lot of times, sometimes you learn things the hard way, um, but they're going to be better players for it in the long run, by all means, having, having played as true freshmen and getting exposed to this this early in their career. Kind of a recruiting question, Coach. Uh, this year, 
NCAA cut back on the number, number of days. days. You can be out on the evaluation on the days during fall. Yeah, I think it's down to 33 from 42. Be out on Friday night. How difficult is that? Because you've got 16 commitments right now, and each each coach counts as one visit. How hard is that to balance that out to see the guys you have to see? Along with your top targets, how, how big? Yeah, well, the other thing too, you only get you only get the one visit per per school. So, uh, I mean, simply put, right? If let's just take a bye week. Let's say you're going to be out on the road, either Monday, Thursday, Friday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Well, if you send out all ten coaches, right? That's three. That's thirty days right there. You only have three days left. Uh, I have gone out all three Fridays. Uh, these first three weeks of the season, you know, in the morning, go hit the schools, come back for the afternoon meetings and walkthroughs with the players and, and team meal, and then get back out on the road and go watch the game of the schools you visited in the morning. So that's three days used right there. Any coach you went with me, you're only, you're only allowed to send two at most, right? So there's six days, right? So now you're down to 27 left. So you really, the way they've done it, and you're, you're getting – you're getting out to see them more. Uh, well, with with early signing day, most of your class is done, so you've kind of gotten the jump on the next year's recruiting class. I think that's the reasoning behind some of this. But simply put, pretty much across college football, you have a couple days in your bye week, and then you know four or five Fridays sprinkled out throughout the season, and that is what you have for evaluating senior senior games. Coach, uh, I know it's Jaden Waller. He started two weeks ago against Arizona, but got very little targets, if, if any, that I could see against uh, LSU. Was he just was he a little banged up, or was that just a rotational thing? No, he was a little banged up, and obviously we were back to full strength. You know, Xavion was out week one, and then was kind of in a limited snap role week two. He was finally probably his first game full back to strength, feeling really good, uh, which was good because Wally was a little bit banged up and. Now we should be, now we should be. No issues in the in the receiver room from a yeah injury standpoint. Anything else? What are your impressions of uh, Spencer Rattler, the quarterback, and just how tough is he uh, to prepare against? You know, because when he's at his best, he's been among you know some of the great quarterbacks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he, I uh, so I was coaching in San Diego when he was at coming out of Pinnacle High School there in in Phoenix, and we had a we had two weekends of big passing tournaments every year, and you almost got all the all the big teams from Arizona every year for those because it got them out of the heat, got to take their high school team to the beach. So I probably saw him three years in a row as a high school quarterback, you know, in passing tournaments, and his team was in the championship game every year. And obviously he's, you know, top quarterback recruit in the country. He goes to Oklahoma. And now he's found a home in South Carolina. He can make every throw on the field. <clears throat> um, he can pull it down and and run and escape pressure. And I, think I would say he got two or three, maybe even a fourth first down on scramble plays last week against Georgia, you know, mm -hmm. where they kind of got pressure. He was able to find the, find the scramble lane and get out and – Run for a first down, and so well, he is, he's a very good, very talented quarterback. He can make every throw on the field. He can throw the wide field out, the wide field go ball, which you don't see a, a whole lot uh, in college football. And so he's thrown for 367 yards a game, or 357.3 yards per game. That's that's pretty impressive. And so the offense goes through him. And so our number one our number one job this week is to affect the quarterback. All right, thank you guys very much, Hell State.